Imagine a crowd buzzing with anticipation, not for a festival, not for a play, but for a public execution. This was the reality in medieval London, where death was a public spectacle, a source of morbid fascination. People from all walks of life flocked to witness these events, their faces a mixture of horror and strange excitement. Public executions were not just about punishment, they were deeply ingrained in the social fabric of the time. They offered a glimpse into the stark power dynamics of the era, where the line between life and death could be brutally thin. The crowd's reaction, a mix of fear, awe and even enjoyment, reflected the complex relationship people had with these events. Let us delve into the world of medieval London, where the hangman's noose cast a long shadow and public executions were a chilling form of entertainment. Prepare to be both horrified and strangely captivated by this journey into the darker side of history. Public executions in medieval London were more than just a way to punish criminals. They were deeply intertwined with the social and cultural fabric of the time. These events were not merely about justice. They were a form of social theater, a grim performance that conveyed powerful messages to the populace. In an era with limited literacy, these events served as powerful visual reminders of the consequences of breaking the law. The vivid imagery of a public execution was far more impactful than any written decree or proclamation. The gruesome spectacle, meant to deter potential offenders, reinforced the authority of the ruling class and the church. The tools of the executioner, often displayed prominently, were symbols of the ultimate power held by these institutions. The public nature of these events also served as a platform for the authorities to display their power and control over life and death. It was a stark reminder to the people of who held the reins of power and the consequences of defiance. The crowd, often composed of people from all social strata, became both witness and participant in this macabre spectacle. Their presence was not just passive, it was an integral part of the event, adding to the atmosphere of tension and fear. The message was clear, disobey, and you could be the next one on the scaffold. The sight of the noose swaying gently in the breeze was a chilling reminder of the fate that awaited those who dared to challenge the established order. For the common folk, public executions offered a rare glimpse into the world of crime and punishment. It was an opportunity to see justice in action, to witness the final moments of a condemned person and to reflect on the fragility of life. In a time when entertainment was scarce, these events, however gruesome, provided a source of excitement and drama. The anticipation, the build-up and the final act of execution were all part of a morbidly fascinating spectacle that drew people from far and wide. The crowd's presence, their reactions ranging from fear to morbid fascination, added another layer to the already complex dynamics of these public displays of death. The collective gasp, the murmurs of horror, and the occasional cheer all contributed to the atmosphere of the event. Announcements of upcoming executions were made by town criers, ensuring that everyone knew when and where the next spectacle would take place. This not only guaranteed a large audience, but also served to heighten the sense of anticipation and dread. Families would discuss the events, sharing their thoughts and reactions. And in doing so, the stories of these executions would be passed down through generations. These discussions reinforced the societal norms and the importance of adhering to the law. Artists and chroniclers would often capture these events in their works, ensuring that the memory of these executions would endure long after the actual event. These depictions served as historical records and as further deterrence to would-be criminals. The tolling of the church bell marking the beginning of an execution was a somber reminder of the gravity of the occasion. It called the faithful to witness the event and to reflect on their own lives and actions. As the sun set over the medieval town, the echoes of the day's events would linger in the minds of those who had witnessed them. The spectacle of a public execution was more than just a punishment. It was a powerful tool of social control, a reminder of the ever-present authority of the ruling class and the church. The public execution was a carefully orchestrated spectacle designed to inspire fear and awe in equal measure. These events were not merely about punishment. 
They were a form of social control, a way to reinforce the power of the ruling class and the consequences of defying them. The condemned, often led through the crowded streets to the execution site, became a spectacle of suffering. The journey itself was a form of psychological torment, as the condemned faced the jeers and taunts of the gathered masses. This walk of shame was intended to strip them of their dignity long before the final act. Their cries, pleas for mercy, and final moments of terror served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life. The public was forced to confront the reality of mortality and the brutal consequences of stepping out of line. These cries echoed through the streets, embedding themselves in the collective memory of the community. The execution itself was a brutal affair. Hangings were common, with the condemned left to slowly strangle to death. The process was deliberately prolonged to maximize suffering and to provide a prolonged spectacle for the onlookers. Hangings were common, with the condemned left to slowly strangle to death. The crowd watched in a mix of horror and fascination, their reactions a testament to the effectiveness of the spectacle. The slow, agonizing death served as a powerful deterrent to those who might consider breaking the law. More gruesome methods, such as drawing and quartering, reserved for the most heinous crimes, involved dismemberment and disembowelment while the victim was still alive. This method was not just about ending a life. It was about sending a clear, unambiguous message of the consequences of severe transgressions. The crowd, exposed to the sights and sounds of these horrific acts, was meant to internalize the message. Crime did not pay. The visceral reactions of the onlookers, their gasps and cries, were part of the intended effect, ensuring that the memory of the punishment would linger long after the event. The authorities often used public executions to make examples of those who dared to challenge their power. These events were carefully staged to demonstrate the reach and strength of the law, reinforcing the social order and deterring potential rebels. Religious dissenters, political rivals, and even common criminals accused of particularly heinous acts were made to suffer publicly, their deaths serving as warnings to others. The public nature of these executions ensured that the message was clear. Defiance would be met with the harshest of consequences. The blood-soaked spectacle, a grim reminder of the consequences of disobedience, ensured that the crowd remained acutely aware of the power dynamics at play. The public execution was not just a punishment, it was a performance, a ritualistic display of authority and control, designed to maintain the status quo and keep the populace in check. Despite their gruesome nature, public executions in medieval London also had a theatrical aspect. The condemned were often given a chance to make a final speech known as the last dying speech which could range from confessions of guilt to proclamations of innocence or even angry diatribes against their accusers. These speeches, often infused with drama and emotion, captivated the audience. The crowd's reaction to these final words could sway public opinion, turning a condemned criminal into a folk hero or amplifying the condemnation of the guilty. The line between justice and entertainment blurred as the drama of the execution unfolded before the eyes of the enthralled spectators. Adding to the theatrical nature of these events were the executioners themselves. These figures, often shrouded in mystery and feared by the populace, played a crucial role in the spectacle. Their skill in carrying out the sentence, their demeanor, and even their attire contributed to the overall drama of the event. A swift and clean execution might elicit cheers from the crowd while a botched attempt could lead to outrage and unrest. London, a city steeped in history, bore witness to countless public executions. These events were not just mere punishments, but were deeply woven into the fabric of the city's historical narrative. Among the many sites associated with these grim spectacles, Tower Hill stands out as one of the most notorious. It was a place where the fate of many was sealed, and where the public gathered to witness the final moments of those condemned. Located just outside the Tower of London, this place served as a stage for the execution of many high-profile individuals. The proximity to the Tower of London, a symbol of royal authority and power, added to the significance of the executions carried out here. The choice of Tower Hill for these executions was no accident. 
It was a deliberate decision meant to amplify the impact of the executions. The hill's visibility and accessibility made it an ideal location for such public spectacles. As the site where many prisoners of the tower met their end, it carried an aura of dread and finality. The very ground seemed to echo with the cries of the condemned and the air was thick with the weight of their impending doom. The executions here were not merely about punishment but also about making a public statement. They were a demonstration of the power and authority of the ruling class, a stark reminder to all of the consequences of defying the crown. By executing prominent figures at Tower Hill, the authorities aimed to send a clear message. Even the highest ranking individuals were not above the law. The public nature of these executions ensured that the message was received loud and clear by all who witnessed them. The list of those executed at Tower Hill reads like a who's who of English history. From nobles to queens and even a saint, the hill has seen the end of many who once held power and influence. Nobles, queens, and even a saint met their end here, their blood staining the ground and adding to the grim legend of the place. Each execution added another layer to the hill's dark history, making it a place of both fear and fascination. For centuries, the shadow of the executioner's axe loomed large over Tower Hill, a stark reminder of the power of the monarchy and the ever-present threat of death. The hill stands as a testament to a time when public executions were a tool of control and a spectacle for the masses. Historical records and documents provide a detailed account of the executions that took place at Tower Hill. These records not only list the names of those who met their end, but also describe the circumstances and the public's reaction to these events. The crowds that gathered at Tower Hill for executions were a mix of fear, curiosity and sometimes even morbid excitement. For many it was a rare opportunity to witness the final moments of the powerful and the infamous. Today, Tower Hill stands as a historical site with markers and plaques that tell the story of its dark past. Visitors can walk the grounds and reflect on the events that once took place here, a stark contrast to the bustling city that surrounds it. Guided tours offer a deeper insight into the history of Tower Hill, bringing to life the stories of those who met their end here. Through these tours, the legacy of Tower Hill continues to be remembered and understood by new generations. As the sun sets over Tower Hill, the shadows lengthen and the air grows still. It is a place where history lingers, a silent witness to the passage of time and the many lives that were forever changed here. Memorials and plaques serve as a reminder of the individuals who lost their lives at Tower Hill. They stand as a testament to the enduring impact of the events that took place here, ensuring that the stories of the past are never forgotten. Tower Hill, remains a significant landmark in London, blending the old with the new. It is a place where history and modernity coexist, a reminder of the city's rich and often tumultuous past.